shouldn't regard the current uh, wet year as a sign that things have fundamentally changed. If we go back uh, in, in history and look at the number of wet months that occur in each year and the gap between years with wet months, Federation drought and the Second World War drought, the maximum gap between years with wet months was three years. We've just been through a period with 15 years on end without a wet month. I'm not a meteorologist, but I think all of the indications are that this is uh, likely to be, the future is more likely to be like the last 10 years than it was of wet periods earlier. The drought is certainly not over, and certainly that message that the drought's over hasn't been communicated to Melbourne's water storages. They're only half full. You've had this enormous climatic event which will happen again. Uh, it's been a tremendous stress test on the system. The system, in my view, has responded better than any other one in the world would have responded, including from the market-oriented water management system, a lot of favorable outcomes. Now, the total savings of water around cities like Melbourne have been very substantial. People have more than halved their consumption, or more in many cases. And what that's done is it's enabled the catchments to be manageable. I think the total level of the dams and reservoirs about two years ago in Melbourne was roughly equal to what we've saved, cut back. And that was under a controls regime, not a pricing regime. So I think the message is clear. The controls often have to be used. But what we, what we need to do is to reinforce those controls with sensible pricing arrangements. The institutions for planning, I think, uh, need some serious renovation, particularly given what we've just seen, uh, both in the urban water sector and in the Murray-Darling Basin, uh, when the stress of a drought um, has really um, put severe stress on our planning processes and procedures, and they need to be uh, renovated, renewed in the light of the experience. And the desalination plants are a natural political response to serious drought. If you live in a, a city, you're not really going to complain when you get desalinated water if it turns out the alternative was nothing. So politicians didn't want to run that risk. And now in Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Brisbane, the Gold Coast, desalinated water is part of the new supply. We have portfolios of water opportunities in Australia. You're basically a dry place with very high variability. Um, and I think this is an opportunity to retool, to re-equip, to deal with the variability that you have and any new variability that comes to this. And that's gonna require a lot of investment in knowledge, a lot of investment in technology and new uh, approaches to planning and to thinking about issues of risk and how you manage those, issues of managing not just a dam and a pipeline, but managing portfolios of assets. I'd like to talk briefly about the risk premium. A lot of the source of expansion is going to be financed by private capital. That private capital will cost a lot unless there's reasonable certainty of water supply. The desal plants have increased that certainty. It means also that because the cities aren't going to raid the, the rural areas for water, those rural areas can be more confident about their supply of water and therefore their cost of capital will go down. And if the cost of capital drops below what it might have been, then food production can expand. So the Commonwealth can do a lot to bring these together. Um, uh, but the states have the detailed operational knowledge and under intimate understanding of these water supply systems, which the Commonwealth doesn't have. So there's a very strong need for what I'd call a cooperative partnership rather than a strong central leadership. A lot of ministers will say that if the think tanks, if the independent organisations outside government, if they're not expressing their views in very well researched and documented ways, then it's very hard for those ministers to achieve success in cabinet for sensible reforms. There has to be a sense of independent endorsement of the strategy plan for water.